Hello, it's John here with another 852 tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at creating ash, sort of an ash falling particle effect that you could use in a fire. So, just as a quick recap, if you haven't so far, we have created Spawning Hearts custom particle effect, very sort of intro basics to get going. We developed that, built on a bit more to create a warp hole. Last time we created a falling leaves from a tree tutorial. And this time we are going to be creating an ash falling effect. I will quickly show you what I'm going to be using for this. So I've got two particle effects, two particles even. I have ash type 1, which you'll note has sort of got a burn effect around the middle and quite low opacity. And ash 2. Nope, to give this a bit of range, and this one's more of a fire type effect, um, a more fire charred effect. I will make those available via a link below in the video description. Um, yeah, let's jump straight in then and get working. So, the first thing I'm going to do is import those files. And as before, we're going to right click them and create materials out of them. The default name's fine. And in my material editor, switch to my plane view. And make sure I'm this time going to work in additive because I sort of want that half see through look to really be prevalent. But we can always tweak it and change it and try, you know, maybe a master or something later if this doesn't work out. So I'm going to just save that and do the same with Ash 2. And right click, create material, and leave the default name. Hit enter twice. Additive. And opacity. Cool. So those are those set up. Let's real quickly, since as before, we're going to right click and create a particle system. Let me just move this out of the way for now. And the particle system, I'm going to call this Ash Falling. And let's go Pahe. And hit to enter that. Also, now in my window. As always, we can see our default shape. Let's change this. And we're just going to work with Ash 1 for now. And all we're going to do is, just, like I say, just work with Ash 1 for now. Get this looking okay. And see how it's going to work. I'm going to drop my Ash Falling Particle Effect into the game. And give that a second to sort itself out. And just cool. So as we can see, we now have our material. We can see our material. Excellent. This sort of tutorial as well would sort of work similar for for snow. Yeah, it works similar for snow. So I mean, you can sort of take the principles and convert it. And try it and get that working. So, let's get our particle effects back over here, our particle window. And I'm just going to side by side for now. And let's start tweaking our particles. The first one we're going to do is, just because I want it to start feeling, feeling ashy already, is we're going to play with this initial velocity. And at the moment, it is flying high, so we're going to drop our z-axis right down. We want some to sort of go, because ash rises and falls, because it's very light. So let's set our max to up, but the majority of which we'd like to come down. Cool. And we're going to just... Uh, 
yeah, to tweak these a little bit, give it a bit more range back and forth. Cool. Save that, and I'm going to get it into position. I've built a house just out of you know basic static meshes, real quickly in the in the editor, and all I'm going to do is because I want it to sort of simulate the roof being on fire. I push that far out. You know this would be easier in top down view. Hmm. You know I'm just going to redrag and drop it back over here. Make sure it's in there. Find my first one and just delete that out. So ash falling. Go back in here. F to locate. It's a bit high at the moment, so let's drag and drop it in. Awesome. And what I want to do is go back into top view again, and I'm going to measure out my width by holding my middle mouse button and dragging across and I can't quite see the numbers because it's a white on white 530 by presumably 530 again oh, 480 cool 530 by 480 530 by 480 let's go back into a particle system over here and we are going to right click and get an initial location. So, right click, find location, initial location. And let's go down and tweak this. So, if it's 540, you know we can drag this right, and you can see how it's pulling right. We probably want to be about 240-ish. And we'll add some negative this about 240 again. We can get a bit more than that. And let's do the same on our Y. Add some width. So again, we probably want to go about 240-ish. And then same again on the minus. Excellent. Okay, so we have our ash. Our ash is now being created in our loose width. What we're going to do as well, just to make sure, so you can see some spawning right outside and in the walls and stuff. That makes things going to be falling around a bit. Let's put on a quick collision. Act collision. Go to act collision and set to kill. So now when it hits walls and stuff it will kill, destroy. Excellent. Our ash isn't quite falling far enough. So the first thing we're going to do is tweak our lifetime. This is going to really want to be quite high. Give it that bit of range for it almost seemingly random. And let's tweak our velocity again. Just to make sure that it seems like it's falling slowly. Cool. Looking good. The initial size is probably a bit high, so I'm going to, again, tweak the size. Just going down. Um, at the moment it's 25, let's try 12. You know, let's add a bit of random to it. Um, try higher than 12, let's try 15. That looks pretty cool. Maybe I might go a little bit higher. Excellent. So we have falling ash. At the moment, they're all falling down. This same like sort of shape. Let's add some rotation to this. So we're going to right click and we are going to go to rot. Now we're going to go to add some initial rotation rate for now. 
And you see how these are coming down? Very spinny now. Almost too spinny, if you ask me. But they're coming down with rotation. So let's tweak the numbers. I kind of don't want that much rotation. But I don't want any static either. So I'm going to really bring this down so it just don't rotate that much. And have these numbers really small because I want the rotation to be really small. And I'm going to put an initial rotation on as well just so they start with different. And that should be fine. Just preset. Cool. Alright, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm now going to tweak the color of life. So I can delete that. We don't need that in there. And we've got our collision, we've got our rotation. Looking pretty good. Maybe drop the number that's been spawned at the moment. So it's quite, I say it's a quite high number purely for testing. So I'm going to drop this quite rapidly now. Because not that much ash will be falling. Nice. It's looking pretty good. Cool. And the next thing I'm going to do now is I want to add this second ash material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, go to emitter and duplicate emitter. And in this one where we've got ash material 1, we're going to drag in ash material 2. And I want to mix this up a bit, I want it to seem a little bit different, so I'm going to drop the spawn again on both of them. Tweak some of the lifetime. Maybe change the size up a little bit. And again, tweak the velocity. These ones, I'd like them to fall a bit faster because I'm going to imagine they are heavier. And I'm just going to save this now. Give this a second to build and render those in. Okay, so I have noticed that something has gone wrong with this material. Let's have a quick look at what's going on over here. Why is that coming through with the red? Let's try changing it from... It is Ash 1 that's doing that, right? Or is it Ash 2? It's got to be Ash, Ash 2. Okay, so we have both Ash types falling in. Not particularly sure what was wrong with my material. It seemed to be set up right with additive, but it's working now. So let's not look at gift us in the mouth. Um, done with the particle emitter for now. I just want to sort of test this out, give it a good, better ashy look. And what I'm going to do is create a light. Um, a point light I'll do for now, just for testing purposes. And I'm going to go into my details panel down here and change the color of my light to a red, fiery sort of red. Excellent. Probably don't want it so big. Just soften it out a bit, and the intensity is probably a bit high as well. And that looks pretty cool. Let's even, I've got start content in here, let's even throw down their fire. And I'm just going to scale that up. 
Let's get a little up here. That is a raging inferno. But it'll sort of do the trick just for testing purposes. And let's go in and have a look. Awesome! That looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. We've got a nice range in our particles. Probably some are scaling up a bit too big actually. I'm gonna just tweak that real quick. Go back to my falling ash particles. Um, which one was it scaling? That's scaling up too big. The first one. I think it's this one. This one looks like it's scaling up too big. Set this to maybe 15. Let's try with this one on. That looks pretty nice. Excellent. Cool. So there you have it. We have created a falling ash type particle effect. We've got a range in our things, in our particles when they hit the wall. It's looking good. Those sparks coming from that. And overall, I'm happy with that. Looks really good. Probably a bit thick. Maybe I dropped the spawn again a bit more. Maybe dropped the life a bit as well. But ultimately, I am happy with that. So, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please like and subscribe and all that usual jazz.